In this session we are going to look at the effect of learning curves on production times and therefore how they impact on producing budgets and standard costs, which will ultimately impact on pricing decisions as well. When the workforce within a business start making a new product, the rate of production can be fairly slow to begin with. But as they make more of the items or more batches of the items and the task becomes more repetitive, they will become faster and therefore the average time taken to make each unit or batch will decrease and the labour cost per unit will drop. This decrease in time taken is called the learning curve effect and it can be demonstrated in graphical form as seen here where the vertical axis is the time taken to make each unit or batch and the horizontal axis is the volume of production. As the volume produced increases the time taken per unit or batch drops initially quite quickly and then slowing as the effect of the learning curve effect starts to diminish. Once the workforce are up to their optimum speed the labour cost per unit will plateau as they spend on average the same amount of time on each unit or batch as can be seen on the graph. When producing budgets we need to consider these changes in the labour costs to ensure the budgets are as accurate as possible given the information available to us. This learning curve effect won't work for all businesses or for all production scenarios. It works best when the following factors are in place. A motivated workforce who are keen to work at a fast pace and are keen to learn. And there needs to be a low turnover of workers as well, so that each of the workers have time to learn the process and then speed up. If the workers on the production line are continually changing, there is constant training needed and therefore the learning curve effect will be minimal. The production process itself must be a repetitive one. Clearly if the process keeps changing then the employees continually have more to learn and the learning curve effect is massively diminished. The production process needs to be labour intensive. If machines are being used for the majority of the process they will work at the same pace with large or small volumes and at both the start of the new production process and some time after the process has been in place. And the production process in question must be a new one to the business. If the same production process has been used for some time and we are merely tweaking the process, then clearly there will be little learning effect seen. The basic idea of the calculations we need to perform is to consider the percentage decrease in the cumulative amount of time it takes each time that the output doubles. So, for example, if we start off making 100 units in a batch and that takes 500 hours, we want to know how long it would take to make 200 units or two batches. Assuming that the learning curve effect is working, we would expect the 200 units to take less than 1000 hours. That is two batches at 500 hours per batch. Let's assume it takes a total of 800 hours to make the 200 units. This tells us that the learning effect has resulted in it taking 200 fewer hours to make all 200 units. This is a drop of 20% compared to the 1000 hours it would have taken based on the original 500 hours for the first batch of 100 units. We would therefore state that the learning curve effect is 80%, that being 100% minus the 20% decrease in time taken. Let's continue with this simple example to demonstrate how the learning curve effect would work as production volumes increase. So if it takes 500 hours to make 100 units and the learning curve effect is 80%, how long does it take to make 800 units? The easiest way to approach this is to put together a table where we will record the cumulative number of units in the left hand column, the cumulative average time taken to make those units in the middle column and the cumulative total time taken to make all units in the right hand column. The starting point in this example is the initial batch of 100 units that took a total of 500 hours to make, so 5 hours each. We then need to double up the quantity being made to 200 units. As already discussed these took a total of 800 hours, but let's break this down following the approach we need to use for the learning curve calculations. We know that the learning curve effect is 80%, so the cumulative average time taken to make a single unit can be calculated as 5 hours multiplied by 
giving four hours per unit and hence the cumulative total time of 800 hours. If we double our quantity again, we can see this in action once more. So now we are making 400 units and the cumulative average time will now be the four hours previously calculated for 200 units multiplied by 80%, giving 3.2 hours per unit. So to make 400 units, the total cumulative time will be 400 multiplied by 3.2 hours, a total of 1,280 hours. Following this principle once more, we arrive at the 800 units required in the question. So now the cumulative average time taken to make a single unit will be 3.2 hours multiplied by 80%, 2.56 hours. And the cumulative total time will be 800 units multiplied by the 2.56 hours, so 2,048 hours. Whilst this process will continue to work indefinitely, it is a very long-winded process once you get beyond around three or four accumulations. So now we are going to look at a formula that can be used to speed this calculation process up. The formula we are going to use is y equals ax to the power of b, where y is the cumulative average time taken to make x units, x is the cumulative number of units made, a is the time taken to produce the first unit, or batch, and b is the learning factor, calculated as log lr divided by log 2. lr is the learning rate as a decimal, so if the learning rate is 80%, lr would be 0.8. The log button can be found on your scientific calculator. Please take some time now to ensure you know where the button is. If necessary, pause this video so that you have time to find the button. Let's use this formula to demonstrate how we can use the same data from the previous example and arrive at the same answer of 2048 hours for 800 units based on initial make time of 5 hours per unit and a learning rate of 0.8 or 80%. So in our example A is 5 hours and X is 8 batches of 100 units. B needs to be calculated using the formula of log LR divided by log 2. Notice that we are not stating X as 800 units, but as the number of 100 unit batches that are being made. This distinction is extremely important if you are to arrive at the correct answer. We need to calculate B before we can put the formula together, so let's do that first. The formula will be log 0.8 divided by log 2, giving minus 0.32192809488. Try to store the full number in your calculator rather than rounding it up or down to a few decimal places. You will get a different answer with a rounded figure. Now that we have b, we can put the full formula together y equals 5 multiplied by 8 to the power of minus 0.321928098. This gives us 2.56 hours per unit as calculated using the tabular method and also the same cumulative total of 2048 hours for the 800 units as previously calculated. The last area we need to look at is what happens once the learning curve effect has more or less disappeared and we have reached something called the steady state. This happens when machines become efficient and restrict improvements, machines reach the limit of safe running speeds, or the labour force have reached maximum working speeds. This can be seen when the calculations we performed earlier show little or no change in the cumulative average time taken to produce a single unit or batch as the quantities continue to increase. Once the steady state has been reached, the average time taken to produce a single unit or batch can then be used for all future budgeting, costing and pricing purposes. We can demonstrate this steady state scenario with a numerical example. In this example, the first batch of a new product took 100 hours to produce, with a learning rate of 75%. If the learning curve effect effectively stops at 21 batches, what time per batch should we use in budgets for the future batches? 
We can use the formula already covered to help with this. In this scenario, A is 100 hours and X is 21 batches. B will be log 0.75 divided by log 2, which is minus 0.4150374499. Putting the formula together therefore gives us 100 multiplied by 21 to the power of minus 0.4150374499. The answer will therefore be 28.26 hours per batch and a total time of 593 hours, calculated as 22.6 hours multiplied by 21 batches. To then work out the length of time taken to make batch 21, the first thing we need to do is work out how long it takes to make 20 batches using the same basic formula as above, the only change being that x is now 20 rather than 21. So this time y will equal 100 multiplied by 20 to the power of minus 0.4150374499, giving a cumulative average time per batch of 28.84 hours and a total time of 577 hours. The difference between this and the 593 hours taken to make 21 batches is the time taken for the 21st batch, 16 hours a massive drop from the initial 100 hours for the first batch. This 16 hour budgeted production time can be applied to any budgets from batch 21 onwards. To extend this further we can also work out the total time taken to make, say, 45 batches. We know from our previous calculation that the total cumulative time to make 20 batches is 577 hours and we also know that every batch from 21 onwards will be budgeted to take 16 hours. So if we add together the 577 hours and 25 batches at 16 hours per batch, we get a total time for 45 batches of 977 hours.